Welcome to the world of ants. A lot of you folks asked us to speak about harvester ant species. So today we want to share with you one of the most interesting species of the northern hemisphere. The highly organized harvester ants Mesa barbarus. Let's get right into it. Let's take a look at this one here, merrily trotting about. She's a Mesobarbarus ant. The size of this species varies from 3 to 14 millimeters. They have a petiole that divides into two sections. You can recognize them because their thorax and abdomen are always black. But the head color can vary between dark red, which can look almost black, and light red. The red color is actually what helps you to distinguish Barbarus from the other Messer ants. Their body is covered with light hair, particularly visible on the abdomen. Mesobarbarus is a Mediterranean species. You can encounter them in France, Spain and North Africa. These ants live on rocky and sandy landscapes, but it's not rare to find them in dry fields, meadows or orchards. These ladies have particular tastes. They prefer to nest on gentle slopes with sparse vegetation sheltered from the cold winds. Don't go looking for them during the winter though. These sleepyheads hibernate from November to April. If ants like Formica rufa survive the winter slumber using the food they store in their stomach, Mesa Barbarus used the seeds that they gathered underground in chambers similar to our granaries. These chambers are the reason why they love dry and rocky soils. But before we go into the details of their agricultural system, let's answer another question first. Why do Mesobarbarus ants come in so many different shapes and sizes? Look at this lady. Her Majesty, the Queen, is the most noticeable ant of the colony. Because male ants die shortly after mating, she's already a widow. She can grow to a size of up to 14 millimeters. She has the biggest gaster of the colony. Her flight muscles are very strong and located in the thorax. In comparison, males are much smaller. With their 8 millimeter length, they're just a bit more than half of a queen's size. The queen can live up to 20-ish years. During her lifetime, she lays millions of eggs. These features are very useful as Mesobarbarus is a monogenous species, meaning that there's just one queen in the nest. But no worries, the queen is not alone when working to take care of the brood. The minor workers, the smallest ants of the colonies, are always there to help. Look how they move and cradle them. On our Mesorbabra size comparison, the miners take their place at the bottom of the list, with a size of 3 to 8 millimeters. The media workers are intermediate in size. They work mostly outside the nests and are 8 to 12 millimeters long. The major workers are definitely bigger, to the point they sometimes almost match the size of a queen. Look at the size of the head and the mandibles. They are big, strong, ready to defend the nest. They act as soldiers for the colony. That means that they attack anyone or anything that threatens the nest. In absence of a threat, they patrol or help the other ants, cracking the biggest seeds. There is something important to understand here. Depending on the needs of the colony, any ant can switch from one task to another. This switching of tasks is triggered by a massive release of pheromones, which push the ants to change their priorities. It takes 10 to 14 days for a Mesobarbarus egg to become a larva. Then, in another 10 to 20 days, the larva becomes a pupa. Look at this larva. You might expect these to turn into cocoons, but this genus does it differently. You can already guess what the future ant will look like here. This is called a naked pupa. The ant will then turn into its final adult shape in 10 to 25 days. The metamorphosis of this one here is almost completed. She's already moving her antennas. Her exoskeleton is still quite soft and clear, but it will become darker as it hardens. So, it takes about 30 to 50 days to fully develop. Please note that these numbers are a theoretical summation of three different phases. For instance, a growing ant might be an egg for 14 days, but become a pupa in only 10 days. From the 17th to the 19th century, Scientists thought that the Messers were bad for nature and prevented seed dispersal. Today we know better. In fact, Messer ants help the plant's dissemination of seeds. This phenomenon is known as Myrmecocori. This is particularly true in the desert. A study proves that the plant biomass increases two times faster in presence of Messer ants. Very impressive. Some other studies, that you can find in the description, suggested that Mesobarbarus has a direct effect on the dissemination of cereal crops. Like other insects, they are more a solution than a problem for greener farming models. Some species of the genus of Meso like to forage alone, but not Mesobarbarus. For this species, foraging is a team effort. 
They create powerful pheromone trails up to 30 meters or 100 feet, clearing the path of any vegetation or animal life form. Mesa barbaros sometimes create seed depots on the way, where they drop off the seeds. Another ant will be in charge to complete the rest of the journey, bringing the seed from the depot to the nest. Communication is essential for these ants, as they team up for sorting and carrying the largest seeds. In summer, when the temperature rises, these small deposits help an ant not being exposed too long to the sun, as they have shorter paths. This is very practical when the temperature in Spain or in North Africa, for example, exceeds 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. When Mesa Barbaros simultaneously exploit several areas, their paths create a network that looks like a tree structure. Seed deposits are built in the intersection of the branches, but not all intersections will have a deposit. As the seasons pass, the amount of naturally available seeds fluctuates. This leads ants to close paths they don't need anymore. If the temperature exceeds 33 degrees Celsius or around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, mesobarbarous ants shift their foraging into the night. How does a mesobarbarous ant select a seed? First of all, a messer always selects a seed that will fit in the nest. The bigger the nest is, the bigger the seeds will be. A study carried out in the south of France suggests that the barbarous ants grab seeds between 0.2 mg and 60 mg. These seeds will be chosen among their favorite plants. Pay attention to this one here. She's carrying a part of a cricket, a head from the looks of it. Adult mesobarbarous don't need proteins, but the queen and the larvae do. For certain species, proteins are essential, but they represent only 1% of the food mesobarbarous ants collect. But they are still fierce hunters when they need to. This poor worm here never stood a chance. When a seed or what remains of it is no longer useful, media or minor ants bring it to the waste deposit area. This ant is carrying one of her deceased sisters. She will bring her to this mountain of trash, which is also the final resting place of all ants. A mature mesobarbarous nest counts around 90,000 individuals. The bigger part of the colony works outdoors, but what they do indoors is no less interesting. Here we are witnessing the creation of a new tunnel. They extend the network of tunnels and chambers, which is indispensable to the colony's survival. Some of these chambers are dedicated to the brood, others are transformed into seed granaries. In both cases, the control of the temperature and the humidity rate is essential. These ants store and check the seeds in the chamber, watching out that the seeds don't start to ferment. Looks like this seed here is not in the best condition. This ant has to find a more suitable place for it. As you already know, ants don't have any teeth in their mouths. They have what we commonly call mouth parts. When it comes to eating, they are similar to flies, transforming their food into a paste easier to swallow. So what was the solution that our clever barbarous ladies found? Introducing ant bread. Bon appétit! Remember when I mentioned ants not having teeth? That is still correct, but they do have powerful jaws, their mandibles. Thanks to these powerful pliers, they are able to grind seeds and mix them with their saliva. The amylase, present in their mouth glands, will dissolve the seed and transform starch chains into glucose. This bread is easier to cut, to be relocated in different places and to be shared among the ants. When one of the ants needs a snack, she just has to suck on the bread and collect the nutritive juice to be fed. Oh, and just before concluding, people ask us a lot if mesobarbarous would practice trophallaxis. Just as a reminder, trophallaxis is the food sharing that ants do from mouth to mouth. We watched this little fellow for more than three hours without observing any trophallaxis. Theoretically, they can engage in trophallaxis. We put a study in the video description about another meso species. It says in this article that meso can go for sugar-based liquids when seeds are lacking. We suppose that at this moment trophallaxis could become necessary. Anyways, feel free to share any feedback with us on mesobarbarous trophallaxis in the comments. Observing them though, we saw them cleaning each other way more than other ant species. Here this ant helps her fellow roommate to clean her exoskeleton. In the world of ants, everything is collective even their hygiene. Aren't these tiny creatures exceptional? Thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel to stay tuned and hit the bell to be sure not to miss our next films. Let us know if you have any suggestions for future videos.